somebody hit my announcement a minute ago that this is the uh, uh, regular schedule. One of Bush selectman meeting uh, Tuesday, June second, two thousand twenty. No, no, Jack, we missed it. That's why I was concerned of your audio. Okay. Got to well, start from scratch. Well, She'd be very irritated at me if I didn't announce that at the beginning. This is how she files her stuff, so that uh, I want to make sure that she does not irritate her with me. So, I just said that. so uh, Anthony, uh, go for it. Okay, thanks, Jack. So, um, three announcements. Uh, Board of Health announces the reopening of trails and athletic fields and parks. Flyer is uh, can be found on our website. Um, Second one is uh, another reminder the mandatory water conservation through September 30th, meaning no sprinklers between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And that's in accordance with the water use restriction bylaw. And the third um, is that we are looking for letters of interest for boards and committee openings. And we're asking to submit them by July 7th. Uh, and there's a whole list of uh, boards and committees that are have positions open uh, in the packet and it's also listed on our website so please uh, residents uh, we welcome you to apply for one of these committees um, two other things Jack I just want to mention uh, today we had the uh, solidarity mat March um, at the Hampton public safety building in support of the victims of racial violence that went extremely uh, well it was very impressive by both Community Hamilton and Wenham coming together in a way that was a, a peaceful demonstration. Um, the last thing that I want to mention is that the um, Hamilton Wenham High School is having a parade for their seniors on June 6th, which is the original date of uh, graduation at, at 11 a.m. So seniors should decorate their cars. The parade will start at the high school. Seniors will meet at the high school no later than 1040. Students will wait in the student lot in their cars until Mr. Tracy and Mr. Menegoni start the parade. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. I should know that to be an Italian name. Uh, please do not leave your car while on school property and during the parade. One car per senior, no other family cars, please. They would prefer if a parent or guardian would drive so the grads can watch what's happening along the parade route. We encourage, we encourage everyone to wear their general's gear and graduates are invited to wear their caps and gowns. Police and fire from both towns will lead the parade and manage the route along 1A between the high school and the Wenham police, fire, police and fire departments. The parade will end at the Wenham um, Town Hall at the intersection of Arbor, Maine and Wenham. We invite family and friends to join us along the route. Please observe all social distance etiquette, including wearing a mask if you can't remain six feet apart. Teachers from all five schools will be located along the route. Hmm. Feel, feel, uh, feel free to spread the uh, spread out along the entire parade route and give our seniors their due. What uh, was the date again? It's June sixth. Oh, so that's coming right up Saturday. All right, Saturday. I have a question. Oh, go ahead, John. Oh, okay. Me too, but go ahead. Mine's, mine's simple. Um, I understand there's a new uh, shed that's been donated uh, onto uh, Cheeseman Park um, and it may be there. Do you have more detail on that, uh, Anthony? Board of Selectmen approved that in a meeting about uh, two months ago. So mm -hmm. I assume that they're installing it. That's what I understood it was being installed today. Uh, do you know that that happened? I do not know personally if that happened, no. Okay. Hopefully. And for, the, and for the general public, uh, it's a shed for the, uh, the Hamilton Wenham uh, Little League. That's correct. So, nice. Okay. So, Anthony, just quickly, um, the parade, um, I guess I'm just assuming that it has received all, like everyone who needs to know, like has any, like the police, our police, uh, the, the Board of Health has had some input. Sounds like a lot of people, and I, I it's the first I'm hearing about it. So I just am hoping that all of the ap appropriate approvals have been obtained and all the right people know. That, um, that's all. That yeah, I, I believe that the school department worked with um, both Boards of Health and both police and uh, fire departments coordinating the event. 
So uh, Michelle Bailey forwarded this to me and asked if I'd uh, read it tonight. Okay. For the public. Okay, great. Thank you. So Andy, let me interrupt and say that uh, we should have begun with, uh, you know, we're all uh, feeling the uh, pain of the uh, uh, George Floyd uh, murder and that uh, the uprisings that are happening all around the country in support of uh, people of color and uh, police oppression, et cetera. So that uh, I just wanted to say that and uh, hopefully that uh, uh, including in Boston here, the demonstrations have become more uh, nonviolent uh, because so uh, our thoughts go out to his family. I'm sure from all the board of selectmen, everybody else. Mm -hmm. So I'll go back to the announcements, and uh, we have one from Dr. Ting, uh, obviously chair of the, uh, on the Board of Health. So uh, <clears throat> announcing, and I think people pay attention to this uh, because of walking in trails and so forth. So I'm going to read this exactly. We have amended the current closure of outdoor spaces to allow for the reopening of town trails, athletic fields, parks, but not playground equipment. Uh, starting on May 25th, 2020. The following guidelines are as noted below. All trash carry is carry in, carry out. I don't know why people bring in trash, but bring your own hand sanitizer. Uh, Main a distance of, and this is a different from what I've heard in the past, 12 feet, not six feet, in park, picnicking, play, etc. No contact sports or shared equipment. Bathroom facilities are closed. Basketball and tennis courts are closed. Playgrounds and playground equipment are closed. Parking and beach remain closed at Pleasant Pond. Parking open at the rail trail, but no parking at Route 97 for the order of board of select. Remain with your own household in these shared spaces. Bring a face covering to use in shared outdoor spaces if you can't remain six feet apart for the governor's order. Actually, I saw 12 feet earlier. Anyway, uh, a reminder for all residents to stay at home safe and that residents should stay at home as much as possible unless you need groceries, medications, urgent medical appointments, or visiting a house of worship. Uh, visit Wenham.gov, WenhamMass.gov for more information on COVID-19 in Wenham, including resources on face coverings, hand washing, mental health support, and other updates from the Board of Health and town officials. Sincerely. He didn't say sincerely. Thank you, Dr. King, Chairman, Regina Baker, RN, Gerald Donlin, Women on Board of Health. So that's the latest. Uh, we've always got something a little bit different, a little bit new from the Board of Health. And hopefully I didn't go over that too quickly, but you can find the results on our website. Right, Anthony? That's correct, Jack. Okay. The rail trail is open. Go for it. Uh, you've already mentioned the mandatory water conservation, but some people I know uh, a year ago uh, when I was at a, a meeting of uh, other candidates for uh, offices that there was a, a pretty big misconception about our water bands. We could have Noah's flood for the next 60 days and we still have a water ban. We're required yeah. to do this. And it's not, nothing to do with our water supply. The fact that uh, it's limited, uh, we can't pump a lot of water. We have enormous pumping capacity in this town with uh, it was three different pumps. Uh, and that uh, we're under the uh, limits imposed upon us by the uh, state, uh, but nevertheless, uh, we're required to basically have this water ban uh, from May 1 through uh, September 30th. Uh, I call it phase one. And phase two is if the Ipswich River uh, drops below a certain level, uh, then we're required to uh, go phase two. Phase one is basically you can't water your lawn uh, before uh, 9 a.m., uh, after 9 a.m. or before 5 p.m., you can water it after 5 p.m. before 9 a.m. In phase two, which we're not in right now, but uh, usually in the summertime, uh, more often than not, we end up with phase two uh, to climb the level of uh, Ipswich River. That means no <coughs> watering at all, other than a hand uh, watering with a, with a hose for the hours I just mentioned. So I know a lot of people uh, pay attention to that. Some people don't pay attention to that. There are fines, uh, and that's uh, not this time of year when the grass is pretty green. Okay. Uh, Could I make a request, Anthony, of uh, keeping the um, 
um, appointments for the different uh, committees and commissions on the uh, agenda for the following number of weeks or months uh, so that we can talk a little bit more about those uh, publicly. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Um, Yes, we turn to Catherine. For the consent agenda, we just have minutes this time. Um, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the consent agenda, including the following. Open session meeting minutes of May 5th, 2020 and May 12th, 2020. A second. Comments, corrections? All set. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Catherine, Catherine John. yes. Hi, Jack. Okay, that's all I have. Okay, tough job you had there, Catherine. I know. It's kind of <laughs> <laughs> they should all be that way. Okay, Mary Beth Ting, do I see her somewhere here? Yes, I do. Uh, you're on, Mary Beth. Hi, good evening. I'll be short and sweet this evening. Um, one of the things that's changed this week that Jackie and I will be updating the website on Thursday, the state has changed how they are reporting case numbers. Uh, they are now, they've made the decision as of June 1st to include probable cases. And this reflects the greater availability and prevalence of the use of serology or antibody testing. So that's something that we uh, will adjust our numbers with on Thursday. Um, I anticipate that there will be a couple of cases added to our case count as a result of this. Um, historic cases that we've had that we haven't been counting because we had only been reporting confirmed numbers. So the current confirmed number is 20 in the town of Wenham. Um, of those 19 have fully recovered. We have two attributed deaths, unfortunately, in Wenham to COVID-19. And we have had 25 people enter quarantine because they have been exposed to someone and 22 of those have completed their quarantine. So by and large, uh, the community is doing well. I would encourage everybody to continue with the daily preventative practices and um, we'll update you more as situations change. Thank you very much. Thank Mary you. Beth, the, the two uh, deaths that you re just <clears throat> referred to, are they the same two as you mentioned a couple of weeks ago that's that it's is a cumulative one. all of the numbers i'm giving you are cumulative numbers got it yes. thank you and thank you again for all your good work and oh you're very welcome the one other thing i will say is there have been two questions today about tennis courts in the town of wenham and uh the board of health is meeting tomorrow and i would imagine that i can bring that concern to the board of health for further discussion tomorrow All right, thank you, Mary Beth. Right, any, any other questions? Oh, well, thank you so much. All righty. Uh, on my copy, the agenda, Kathy, is still up. Employee vacation carryover request. Okay, uh, we get these requests annually. I think we see a few more this year, probably because no one's been able to take any vacation. Um, I'll make the motion that the Board of Selectmen approve vacation carryover for those employees outlined in the town administrator's memo dated May 26, 2020. Maybe Anthony, if you wanted to say something about that. Yeah, I don't, I think that you said it. This is something that you have year to year um, and this year maybe a little bit more than uh, past due to the pandemic. Um, I know myself, I, I had two vacations canceled um, short, uh, but uh, they were canceled nonetheless. And really, even if they weren't canceled, leaving at a time of a pandemic, it just doesn't, uh, is not something that we're able to do right now. So um, certainly that's, that's a reason why that they may be a little bit more than in prior years. But I would recommend that these be approved. I have a question, uh, which you gave us. So the vacation time must be used by June 30th, but the second sentence of the memorandum I have in front of me is uh, vacation time by vote of the board of selectmen, which we're doing tonight, may be requested for carryover for the next fiscal year and used by September 30th of the corresponding year. Does that mean September 1st of this year? Uh, it, it does. 
And so all of these people, including you, have to use their time in July and August. That's what it says. It does. And, you know, I, I probably, I, I'd, I'd ask that that date be extended through the end of the calendar year, because I think September 1st is going to be still a challenge. I would think so. Yep. I would agree. We're not going to see you, Anthony. No. no. And you, yeah, that gives people time to take their vacations at different times so that um, not, you know, you don't have a bunch of people going at the same time. I would agree with Jack on that, extending that date. Yeah, it's pretty strict. Otherwise, uh, no one will be in town hall all summer long. So that, uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so the motion has been amended, uh, I presume, uh, that to uh, say that uh, the carryover the next year must be used by December 31 of this calendar year. Is that satisfactory, Anthony? Yes, satisfactory to me. Uh, with that modification? Yes. Catherine, back to you. Okay. Um, so the motion, I guess, do you want me to re repeat the motion with the amendment or are we ready to vote? I'm ready to vote. Okay. Um, Catherine Tinsley, do you have that? Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. John, John aye. Jack, aye. Yeah. Catherine, aye. Okay, unanimously, with the carryover, it must be used by December 31 of this of this calendar year. Calendar year, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, guys. All right, Jack. I guess I'm up next. You're up next, John. Take the bow. You said yes. Yes, take the bat and swing, okay. John. You're up. <laughs> All right. Uh, I move that the board of selectmen. Uh, authorize the chairman of the board uh, to sign the local in initiative program uh, application for the local action uh, units units for the Spring Hill uh, subdivision uh, created by cre oh creating two affordable units uh, on the property. I think we should turn this to Margaret Hoffman to explain all of this stuff. Well done. Yes. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I'll throw in a second there before we turn it to Margaret so that we have. I'll second time. it. Okay. Thanks, Margaret. <laughs> I, Margaret. Um, hi, how are you? Um, this is Margaret Hoffman. Um, so we have an application. You have an application in front of you for a local action unit um, for the Spring Hill subdivision. You probably all recall that was permitted several years ago and part of the planning board condition was that they create some affordable units. The house on at 83 Dodges Row is part of the project and that unit is being sold as an affordable unit. The first steps in that is to get um, the local action unit application into DHCD. Spring Hill has hired um, um, MCO housing to do their lottery. So this is just the first step to get this unit counted on our SHI. Um, once the application is in, then they'll start their lottery process to sell the unit as an affordable. I imagine it should be sold by the end of the year. Um, they're renovating just that one unit right now. Um, it's, there's not a lot of work to do to it, they said. They're doing some interior work and then it needs a new septic system. Um, but that will be done prior to it being sold. Any questions? We certainly, of, we certainly have a lot of information about package about this. Well, it there, is. there is. Uh, that package is huge, isn't it? Um, uh, it's huge. That's right. Yeah. They a have state document. Have, it's a state <laughs> yeah. document. Yeah. It's a state <laughs> application. Um, most of it is just information that um, went with the special permit. So we had to prove that it was a local, um, it's a local action unit, meaning the town did something to, um, to create it. And what we did was we gave the permit for the, um, for the project. So that's included in there, as well as their whole marketing campaign. Um, they also have a regulatory agreement draft in there. All of these documents have to go to the state so that they can approve them. Um, and then, then we can, um, they can go ahead and market the unit. God almighty. I know. A couple of questions, Margaret. Can I read it all? Uh, yes. I think, 
It's very similar to the ones that we've we've passed before. Um, yeah. A clarification, I think I know the answer to this, but I just want to be sure. So I yeah. believe the planning board um, a, approved or conditioned this um, permit on two affordable units, and I believe they expect to build the second, but don't have firm plans. So we're putting right. an application for the first one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right now, they only they only have the first one ready to go. The planning board's decision required that they create two, but hopefully three units mm -hmm. of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, so the first unit is the house that's already there on 83 Dodges Row. And then the next unit will come from a lot that they're, it's lot 17 on the project. Um, right now it's unclear how that's going to be turned into an affordable unit. And if they talked about donating it to Habitat for Humanity and trying to get that there. But right now, this is just that first unit. Um, so we want to get started on that one. And the second one will come, um, I'm sure, before the road is um, accepted. Right. Um, <laughs> okay, that's thanks. What we're hoping. Yeah. Thank you. Now, to that point, uh, if I might, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I had a lengthy conversation with uh, Margaret this afternoon about the uh, affordable units. And there, I think there ought to be an incentive put in by the planning board um, to see that these affordable units, when uh, they become a part of a, a program of development, there's some incentive to make sure that the uh, developer is going to do them and at by a certain time frame, uh, as opposed to letting them drag. I think too often uh, we've let them drag and they become problematic later on. <clears throat> this could possibly be the same thing. I don't know that, um, but I did go up to see the site and uh, it looks like it's coming along nicely. But I'm I'm always concerned because these affordable units are very important to us. Mm -hmm. Margaret, did this set a record for the number of pages uh, in, in an application? It must be 60 pages here. I don't think it sets a record, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close it's, to one of the biggest ones. It's up there. My index finger is going numb from flipping through the pages. I, I didn't draft the application. I'll let them know how good of a job they did, though. <laughs> <laughs> the more paper, the more important The more it paper, is. yeah, the more impressive. OK, do we take a vote yet? I forget. No. Uh, OK, nope. uh, any other questions? No, nope. we had a motion Hearing... and a second, though. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye, Jack Willem, aye. Catherine, yes. John, yes. Okay, passed unanimously. Great. Thank you. Good job, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. A... Thank you, Margaret. It's your night, Catherine. You're, you're next again. Grant of license. Uh, uh, utility okay. pole. You're the utility pole expert on the board. So. Actually, you know, <laughs> it is kind of funny because this is probably the third utility pole uh, action I've taken in the past two years. I said well, you're our expert. Yeah, the agenda item. Um, and I am not even going to play the expert tonight. Um, I'm just going to make the motion, and I'm pretty sure I understand why we're doing this, but I'm going to ask Anthony to explain it. Um, but the motion is that the Board of Selectmen grant the license at 78 Larch Row to the Massachusetts Electric Company and Verizon New England for the purpose, Inc., for the purpose of installing a utility pole. And there's a particular reason we're, we're doing this now, right, Anthony? Correct. So uh, thank you, Catherine. So Missy Barry is on here. It, it, she'll be able to answer more questions. But um, what the food project is looking to do is uh, install um, the National Grid is looking to install a pole on the property at 78 Lodge Row. The Conservation Commission has already met with the food project and has approved the location uh, between the main driveway and the train tracks. So, um, Missy, if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, um, so I'll just kind of speak to why the food project is looking to have electricity added to the site. It's mainly to power a walk-in cooler that they're gonna be using um, to store produce as they you know, harvest it. And at this point in the season, they're looking to start harvesting in about two weeks. Um, and then the food that they harvest and store in the cooler, they're looking to deliver directly um, to customers. 
And then the reason why we're going with a form of license right now is that the town cannot grant any easements on its own property without town meeting authorization. So since no such vote has been taken yet, uh, National Grid has sent us their form of license, which town council has reviewed. And that license will allow National Grid to enter town property to install the utility and can be revoked by the town for any or no reason at any point. And then once town meeting uh, has the opportunity to vote, that form of license will be replaced with an easement. Got it. Any other, other, other comments on this or are we- Sounds like a complicated process to install a utility pole, but okay. Yeah, we had a prior conversation about this a few, a few yeah. months ago. I was, you know, just waiting for a hearing, but guess that will still happen but uh, <laughs> like everything I guess, else I just love those poll hearings anyway I <laughs> was you're Kat the poll uh, specialist yeah, who Jack's, knew? Jack's the water specialist yeah, the same, who knew Catherine Tinsley did we second that was anyone second this motion I believe we did no Catherine's saying no well, um I'll second the motion <laughs> so I guess we're ready to vote yes your motion I made, made the motion so who seconded it? Um, oh, I guess I can't second right. it. I made it. I'll second oh. that motion. Come on. Sorry, Let's thank you. Have the utility Keeping us honest. Enough okay. The utility so we can take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Yes. John, aye. Catherine, aye. I think the good news is we don't have five utility polls to approve. Otherwise, we'd have to add an hour to the meeting. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, Next, uh, I'm going to turn to, this is the Great Blue uh, Research Resident Survey results. Anthony, I'm going to turn back to you. You're a Great Blue expert. I'm going to be the Great Blue expert. Well, yeah. So we, um, we put together a, a list of questions. Thank you to our citizens that filled out the questions. There were 10 questions, um, and I'm just getting it here. And I want to pop out the results. I'm going to share my screen. I thought it was a wonderful survey. It reaffirmed most of what I knew and uh, some things uh, I wasn't quite sure of and that uh, very, uh, very informative. Yes, it, it was. Um, so what we found is, um, and it goes through all the answers to the questions and graphs and so forth. And, you know, you were registered voted, you plan to vote at the annual town election, 60% said yes, 39% no. Um, and we wanted to find out if no, what was the reason for making that choice? And of the 39.3%, uh, 82.4% uh, were concerned about the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, what is your primary concern for voting during the uh, uh, during the pandemic? And it was just the whole physical distancing and crowd control. So obviously, being in a crowd is a concern to people, um, or at least for thirty nine percent. And then we asked them if they'll be uh, voting an absentee ballot. Sixty eight percent said yes. Thirty one point two percent said no. We asked if they would be planning to attend the annual town meeting when it's rescheduled 76.9 percent said yes and I, just to start i believe there was 177 somebody correct me if i'm wrong it might be off by a number or two of of uh residents that took the survey 173 uh, 173 thank you Catherine. so uh do you plan on attending the annual town meeting 76.9 percent yes 23.1 percent said no um if you don't plan on attending, what's the reason for making this choice? Again, 65% said they were concerned about the pandemic. And uh, what would your primary concern when attending the town meeting? And again, it's physical distancing crowd control. So uh, then we asked the question, well, knowing that the town meeting could be held during the summer, um, which I think we're in now, right? Um, Oh, not, quite. not quite. Not quite. Yeah. Would you feel uh, more, how would you would you feel more comfortable if it was held uh, outside? Fifty three point two percent said they'd rather have it outside. The other place that we were looking at uh, for an and the reason why we looked at the AJ Gordon um, uh, 
chapel at uh, Gordon College. They used that for performing arts and it holds 1400. So we felt that if we had to have an indoor venue, then that certainly would allow us to uh, keep everybody physically distanced uh, with six feet and closing off uh, rows and so forth. So, but 53.2 did say that they would prefer it held outside under an opening air tent. Opening a tent means no sides, it would just be a roof. Um, and more than four out of five residents, again, with the physical distancing being a concern. And then we, on the, uh, on the <coughs> questions that had comments, you can see that in the packet, there's a number of the uh, answers that people wrote in. I won't go through all of them, but um, I think that this was a good survey to tell us, um, first of all, you know, what people's concerns are, how we could ease their concerns and uh, into planning uh, for a town meeting and planning for a safe election, which we have been meeting. Um, we have been meeting with our public health and public safety team to make sure that we provide uh, an election that people can feel as comfortable as possible during the uh, current situation. So as an example, when you go in to vote, you'd be given, a, you normally would go up to the voting booth and you have that black pen that's sitting there and you would fill in the oval. Well, now when you check in, you're gonna get your own pen and that's a pen for you to keep. It's a souvenir for- uh, <laughs> From the, from the pandemic. Pandemic. <laughs> from the pandemic. So we're trying to keep everybody as, as uh, keep those concerns down. We realize that there's still anxieties there for a lot of people. And we're trying to do our best to um, create uh, an election and eventually a town meeting where residents can feel as safe as they can expect to be. So, any questions with the uh, I thought that was informative. I thought more people would be, uh, more, uh, I thought many people would be concerned about inside. I didn't realize how many uh, <clears throat> were resistant to an inside meeting. That was very helpful to know because we're going to be talking about that real soon coming up in this agenda about the annual town meeting, certainly, and where we're going to have it, what venues, and so forth. So I thought that was uh, helpful information for us to make decisions. I agree with Jack. I think that was very helpful. Thank you for putting it together. It's our pleasure and it's um, it didn't cost us anything because that's going to come out of the CARES Act funding. So nice. Gee, you got a break today. All right. Uh, John, you're up with the annual town election. Thank yes. You. All right. I, I have a motion uh, to discuss and vote uh, for the, uh, the annual town elections. So I move that the Board of Selectmen vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 39. 10 to um, execute the warrant uh, for the uh, annual town election to be held on Thursday, June 25th, 2020, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, in the Pingree, uh, uh, Perkins Auditorium in the, in the Bessie Buecher School, located at one school street, and to direct that the uh, constable post uh, said warrant forthwith. I'll second that. Thank you. Discussion. Okay. Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor? Jack Willem, yes. Catherine, yes. John, yes. Thank you. That's it for that yeah. one. No, good. Uh, well, Not as long as a poll vote. Ordinarily, the election would be held in town hall, right? Uh, in that, uh, yep. In the selectmen's room with uh, machines and police and so forth. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, I know that Diane's working very hard on all this stuff. Uh, you're up, Catherine, with uh, the COVID-19 fiscal 21 budget. Um. H is, is you skip over H right now, Jack. You want to wait? I skipped over what? H. What? H. What is H? The annual the, the, town the, meeting. Town oh, meeting. God Almighty! Oh, conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't mean to skip over that. Uh, I bet you everyone else thought it was deliberate, isn't it? 
<laughs> no. Uh, okay, I got that one. Uh, discussion regarding the venue date, alternative date option, quorum, warrant hearing. So I apologize. I just been going through the blue dial thing. Okay, so that uh, as the three board of members of board selectmen know, there's been uh, a lot of uh, discussion and emails on this uh, subject. Reminder that uh, ordinarily, we in most other towns would have had this election uh, in early April, I believe April 4th was the date penciled in uh, months and months ago. And we didn't have it because it was the beginning of the pandemic and I think Charlie Baker said, no, you can't do that. In gatherings, I think he subsequently said, uh, uh, exempting <clears throat> municipalities like ours. So, uh, so the question is, uh, where would we have it? And uh, obviously in the past, uh, for those who have attended town meeting, uh, we had it at the uh, uh, gymnasium of the Buker School uh, with uh, social distancing, not a requirement, uh, not concern. And um, for example, last year we had 230 people who attended the meeting uh, and uh, <clears throat> the robust meeting. I think some people might've been standing up in the back. Uh, that included 18 out of town attendees. So we certainly can't have uh, 230 people pile into the um, Buker and gymnasium this year. Uh, common sense tells us that uh, that survey we just uh, reviewed a minute ago certainly reaffirms that. So then what? So as, uh, as the Anthony alluded to a minute ago, uh, the Gordon College people don't want to be in the, uh, uh, what, are the what do they call it, Gordon College? It's the what? It's the A.J. Gordon College Memorial Chapel. Memorial Chapel, right. Uh, has a huge uh, capacity, I think it's 1,400 if I'm correct, uh, and it, uh, but the air filtration system is no better than the house. And so I, I know some people, I'm not going inside. I'm not going inside anywhere. And certainly not going inside there. So that doesn't leave too many options. Uh, one of the options that we might have had, had the legislature uh, enacted something, would be to move out of town for the meeting, Hamilton. But they haven't acted on that. So we're required to have the annual town meeting in Wenham. And I don't think that's going to change at this late date. So um, that doesn't leave us too many options. And so that uh, I guess one would be the Bessie Buker uh, field, if you so, and the other is Pingree Park. Pingree Park is a lot, lot larger than that. I think the parking is probably superior and that uh, uh, it's a big field, excuse me. And that, uh, so we're coalescing around uh, having Pingree Park as the uh, place to have our uh, annual town meeting. We get the dates and other things in a minute. So Anthony is uh, coming up with uh, a small committee to find out how are we going to do that. Uh, we have to obviously uh, contact uh, the people who make who uh, rent the tents out. Uh, Diane Buka is going to have a lot more uh, challenging environment uh, than she otherwise would have, and registering people, um, parking would be an issue, uh, social distancing is an issue. How do we do so? Um, there's a committee of four, informal committee, it's not an official committee of, uh, basically coming up with a uh, recommendation to, this is how it's gonna be done. And so we wanna do this as soon as possible and uh, to get this out of the way. Um, we, you know, some of us got emails mostly from uh, people from the Hamilton Women Regional School District are encouraging their uh, supporters and constituents to uh, email us and uh, uh, get two or three a day. Uh, uh, they're not posting <laughs> emails, mostly uh, urging us to basically to have a meeting before June 30th. So I think that's uh, not going to be possible for timing reasons. Uh, um, and there are other reasons as well. Hamilton's going to have this outdoors as well. I think that we have never done this before and we want to do it right and we don't want to have a fiasco. So one of the things we can do by having it uh, in um, uh, early July, and I'll, I'll suggest a date uh, just get this ball rolling, is July 11th. It's a Saturday. We usually have our meetings on Saturday. So Saturday, July 11th, uh, we'll ask for a vote later on. We're done proposing to have it. So we'll have the benefit of seeing how Hamilton has pulled off uh, their uh, outdoor town meeting. What can we learn from them in other towns as well? And that uh, other surrounding towns are gonna have it outdoors. So I'm sure that uh, having never done this before, uh, and Hamilton doesn't have a lot of practice of this either, we'll be able to learn some lessons and modify whatever we thought was a good idea to accommodate uh, what we were in. Uh, uh, this is gonna take time to do it. So that uh, I think that uh, uh, it's, um, I know that um, emails we're all getting is a so-called 112 budget. 
Uh, I want to digress a minute. We've already approved for the regional school district a so called 112th budget. What does that mean? Well, it means we don't have a meeting on June 30th, an, an annual town meeting, I'm sorry, by June 30th. Uh, the school's regional district is then on a 112th budget, not 112th every month. Uh, it's, it's only one 112th budget the entire year. So whenever we have an annual town meeting, they, they're allowed to spend money from this 112th was presented to us by their, I'll call the chief financial officer of the school system three weeks ago, four weeks ago, something like that. We approved it unanimously and without modification. And so they have a 112 budget. They can start paying their bills July 1st, July 2nd, whatever, that's a Monday or Tuesday. But obviously as the year goes on, they're gonna be a little squeezed by that. So we wanna have it earlier rather than later. Uh, and uh, so, but nevertheless, even if we had the meeting uh, July 11th, which I'm hoping we can, barring some weather disturbance or something else like that, uh, the budget, uh, the, if, when the budget passes and it has to pass, I might digress a minute or two. So it has to pass at our annual town meeting. There's an override at our annual town meeting that has to pass. Uh, there's an override budget at the ballot that has to pass. Hamilton doesn't have any overrides, but they have, the, they bifurcated the school budget into two buckets. Bucket A, bucket B. Both of those buckets have to pass. Uh, otherwise, the schools have a failed budget process. So there's several dominoes there. In any event, if it all passes, I'm saying on July 11th, uh, that budget that we approve, uh, presumably it's approved uh, at the annual town meeting is retroactive to July 1st. So there's no harm, no foul. With it. It's not gonna be out any, anything at all. And I presume it will pass. And so that uh, we have a lot of work to do, and that uh, I think that's as soon as we can do it. Uh, uh, we couldn't have it the Saturday before, but that's July 4th holidays being celebrated on that Saturday. And uh, and I think June 27th would have been uh, too ambitious for us to do. So I'm, I know I'm digressing a lot here. This is uh, what we're thinking about. Uh, and I wanna stop and uh, ask uh, Catherine first and John second uh, to comment. Okay, so I think that everything that I read from all the emails um, and also I guess a, a memo that we've received from the school district is that what's really important um, is to have an annual town meeting before by, by June 30th because um, there apparently are some, especially for the school negative um, of side effects of having to have a 112th bu budget, even if it were just for the month of July. Um, so I think, um, I guess I would have, to, I, I believe that Anthony and the committee that you were talking about has already done a fair amount of work on, um, you know, sort of background work. So I guess m my suggestion would be that, you know, nothing wrong with July 11th, except I think um, from to have a 112th budget and then to switch over um, just a week later to an annual budget, uh, I think has a lot of logistical issues. And I'm not sure that we really buy that much by, um, by a week. So um, I guess I, my, a question for Anthony is, has there been any work done towards the notion of having um, a town meeting outdoors at Pingree, are we, do we have any, we started any of that work? So we have a meeting with the tent company tomorrow. And um, so they're, it's the same tent company that Hamilton is using and Ipswich is using and other uh, communities are using. So uh, providing that whatever date the board chooses, it's just a matter of do they have the tent available. And they have a lot of tents, so I'm not overly concerned about that, but uh, whatever the board does tonight, we'll work hard at making that uh, a reality. So it just seems to me that we have a number of days um, allowable according to um, Diane Bucco between uh, before um, June 30th to pass a budget and that would be to have an, an annual town meeting. And I think for logistical and, and um, financial reasons for us, as well as for the, for the schools who stated pretty strongly um, that we should, we should set a meeting before June 30th. And um, 
Well, you mentioned, Kathy, you mentioned 20, uh, 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 Kathy, you received an email from uh, Diane Bucco saying, whenever the Board of Selectmen votes to have uh, an annual time, it has to be a 20 day um, period. So we, right. we so 20 days, um, the earliest we can have it then would be June, on a Saturday, it would be June 27th, not any earlier. Well, yes, if we were to choose a Saturday. But I guess what I'm saying is, if Diane is saying, and this, you know, nothing is the way it normally is, so I've sort of kind of thrown out the normal, as, although I'd like to keep some of it. Um, it, it. The earliest we could hold a meeting would be June 22nd. So there's a June 22nd, June 23rd, June 24th, June 25th is the election, June 26th, June 27th, I think is a Saturday, June 29th, June 30th. There are there's at least a week, maybe minus a Sunday, between the date that we can legally have a town meeting and the end of June. And it seems like, unless staff says they think that that's impossible, we should try to schedule a meeting in that time frame. As well, I guess uh, there's another consideration. Uh, there's another consideration that I'll mention is that uh, uh, during the middle of the week, people are still working, even though they're working on Zoom. So I contact people in the finance committee. Oh, I can't talk to you until five o'clock after I've done. And that, uh, so we held a meeting, uh, a Zoom, excuse me, an outdoor meeting, say on Wednesday or Thursday afternoon, that would preclude a lot of people who are working and they couldn't uh, break away, even though they're working on Zoom for attending the meeting. So we'd be disenfranchising a significant amount of people, in my opinion. Saturdays, mostly people aren't working unless they work Saturdays. So that uh, we're likely to have a higher turnout on a Saturday, as we have in the past hundred years, than we would have during the weekday. Well, I I agree with you that pe during the day that would be really disenfranchising to people who had to work. Um, there is one Saturday in that time frame, and I guess I was contemplating if indeed we needed to have a meeting on one of the other days that it would be um, sort of a, an evening meeting, as you know, uh, as it doesn't get dark until eight thirty or nine o'clock now, so. There is a Saturday, um, June 27th, we could- it, That would be I, the first time we could, uh, on a Saturday in that- uh, Right, right. So the, it, the very next Saturday that's eligible it would be June 11th, I'm July 11th, I'm sorry. And that uh, there's another comment I wanna make. I did receive an email from Michelle Bailey. She's not the chairman of the Regional School District Board, but she's their spokesperson more often than not. And she told me that in an email this afternoon, that she'd be comfortable with a, uh, uh, as long as we had an annual town meeting by mid July. Did you see an email from the school district from from the finance director of the school district that we read that. this afternoon? We are writing to you to request a town meeting prior to June thirtieth and express our concerns regarding operating a one twelfth budget during FY twenty one. No offense to Michelle, I don't know if you're on here, but um, I I think um, you know. June, July 1st is the new fiscal year. July 1st is the day that the, the 112th would have to go into effect. We're hearing that there are some issues with the 112th. Uh, you know, I'm gonna not gonna be persuaded for 11 days in July. 11 days in July, they can't get a, 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 a live with a 112th budget for 11, for 10 days, actually it's 11. So for 10 days in July, July 1st and uh, July 10th, they can't live with a 112th budget. They never expressed any of those reservations when they came to us was it about three weeks ago and asked for the 112 budget, which by the way, we passed unanimously, as I said earlier, and without modification. And by the way, we did the same thing for the town of Wenham. John, do you have comments on this? I certainly do. Thank you very much for asking. Um, my, I'm gonna let Diane and uh, Anthony <clears throat> work out all the logistics. If I had my druthers, I'd say the Bucher uh, field is, should be adequate, but uh, I'll put that all aside. Um, we have a 40 million, 40 million person um, unemployment rate in the country. Wenham is not, and Hamilton is uh, not amiss to that serious so severity of that number. Uh, Wenham alone is up over four times what it was three or four months ago. Secondly, we've got, we've been warned by Brad and Bruce, uh, Brad Hill and Bruce Tarr that there's a minimum of 20% that could be cut in state aid to the schools. The further down the line we get with time, 
we will better understand what the state coffers are looking like. And when they said they have $4 billion in the uh, war chest uh, against a $44 billion uh, budget, that's not gonna cut ice very, very long. Additionally, because of the um, um, unemployment, I'm very concerned as to what's gonna happen to our receivables for tax payments, uh, including excise as well as property taxes. We have some very significant money there and I'm, it, it's strictly a financial thing. And I, if I had my druthers, I would put, push this down to September. There you go. <laughs> well, oh. and I, I guess I could, um, I, I think in some ways September makes more sense than June 11th, because if we're going to avoid the- You mean July 11th? July 11th. We're, we're, if we're going to avoid the 112th budget, let's do it. And if we're going to wait, then let's wait until we know something. I, I would be interested perhaps in the Board of Health's opinion on this, but- the reading that I have done makes it sound as if, you know, it's a risk-taking thing, but that people are predicting that there could very well be or likely be some kind of a surge in the fall. Um, so I, I think we've got kind of a quiet time right now. And um, I just think if we can manage it, um, we should. Change your minds later on. We need to set a date and start planning so that uh, I know there's a difference of opinion September, June, and July. But I'm going to make a motion anyway that uh, I move that the board of selectmen um, select Saturday, July 11th as uh, our, our date to have uh, our 2020 town meeting. And I'd like to amend that motion to um, say that. Uh, we I need have a second. A... Before oh. you amend it, let me have a second. Okay, That's I'll right. second it. And then okay. I'd like to amend it to Go say. Ahead. Uh, ATM on June 27th, 2020. No, you have, no, wait a we have to vote on this motion, Catherine. You, you can't mend the motion by changing the date. So that uh, if you don't like that date, you can make a motion in a minute and vote no, and then we'll we'll continue. If, if I, John votes no, well, we go back to some other date, like June 27th or I September, like you said a minute ago. I don't think that's the way it works, actually, because if we vote no on this motion, then what opportunity is there to make an amendment? All right, I'll go on. Uh, I don't agree with you. I'll go on with you. And that, uh, so uh, you made an amendment. Do I hear a second? I think Dr. Ting had his hand up, and I did. Add, I don't mean to interrupt. Oh, I'm, you, I'm, Catherine, I'm following your protocol. You wanted to, you made a motion, and you wanted to have a vote on. I'm 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 okay. going forward with your suggestion. I'm having a vote on it. You haven't got a second on your motion. Fine. I just was reacting to the fact that earlier, before even that you made that motion, I asked a question that Dr. Ting was going to answer, but he did not have an opportunity to do that. So, fine. What was the question? Well, we have, we have a motion. Forget it. We have a motion. I, well, obviously, Jack, there's, there's, you know, a, a bazillion people that would like to speak here that apparently are not going to have an opportunity to. So, I, I, I cede the floor to you, Jack. Because you're the one who is talking. So you have a motion. Uh, you have a, I don't, have not heard a second to your motion, and we'll just go with your motion. John, did you second the motion? I have not seconded the motion. Uh, I, I would amend the motion to, to include September, a September date acceptable. <laughs> Do I have a second? So here we are. All right, we're back at you, Jack. No, well, you know, we'll just, you know what? I guess we'll just table, we'll table the subject tonight, apparently. We have three different opinions and, and, and there's a, uh, uh, apparently we can't come together as a board of selectmen on the date. So we'll just have to pass on it and uh, uh, discuss it at a subsequent meeting. Apparently. The, the longer we pass on it, the longer it will take us to have a meeting, and the more people will stay, including our own staff, will be consumed by having to figure out when a meeting is. So I think this might deserve a little bit more discussion. Maybe 
we can come up with some kind of a compromise position. Let's see, June, July, and September. August, we haven't talked about August yet. <laughs> Look, I'll break the ice. Um, I'll go along with the July date. I have no problem with that. Uh, I just feel that the, the further down the line we are, the better information we're going to have. So, um, but that's open to, uh, you know, interpretation. All right, motion was seconded uh, for July 11th. Uh, all in favor? Do we get uh, to have discussion on that? I still have a question. I thought we've been having a discussion the last 10 minutes. No, I have a new question. Why July 11th? Seven um, is a lucky number. And what? <laughs> you know, Jack, we literally, we're not obviously taking any public comment, but I'm watching there are between 29 and 40 people that like to speak and people are raising their hands. And I really don't think it's a time to be flip about this. I know that you and I disagree, um, but it was a serious question. I think I have an, I have a, um, an opinion on why it should be before June 30th. I think you have an opinion on why it should be July 11th. And I'd like to hear what that is. What's the, what's the question? Why what? Why July 11th and not June 27th? Because I don't think we can be ready by June 27th. I'm not confident we can do everything we need to do. We need to actually observe a couple of other towns having tents and outdoor meetings. I want this to go forward. And that, you know, uh, we want to, uh, Paramount, we are talking about money and budgets. Let's go back to the, uh, the, uh, the real thing about public safety. I would be very, very dismayed, extremely dismayed if I found out that we weren't fully prepared for social distancing. If one person who showed up at this meeting, we're gonna have a contracted uh, the COVID-19 and died. Shame on all of us. So I think we need to take all the time we can to make sure that we're doing it in the most safe environment we possibly can. That, that sounds good, Jack, and I don't um, dispute your opinion, but I frankly think that there are people that uh, are in this on staff that we should be asking, can we be ready for a June 27th meeting rather than just your opinion that we cannot be ready and it has to be on July 11th. So- I wasn't confident we could be ready. We, we just started talking about this uh, last day too. We, we haven't had any uh, uh, internal meetings at all on any of these dates. I think the staff has. I think, uh, can we please just ask? I don't mean to put anyone on the spot, but we have at least Anthony here and I don't know who else on his staff. And that was what I was asking Dr. Ting from a board of health point of view. Um, but I would like to know from the staff that we hire if they think we could have a town meeting or be ready for a safe town as safe as possible town meeting on june 27th do you have a problem with me asking that question no nope. okay anthony can you help us with this whatever day the selectmen decide i will make sure that we are ready for a town meeting whatever date that is so june 27th july 11th september or something you believe that we can be ready on any one of those dates we will do our best to make sure that we can provide this town meeting if possible, just like we're doing for the election. So whatever you select and choose, we'll certainly make uh, every attempt. The seats will be six feet apart from each other under this tent. Um, just like, uh, like I said, the other two communities are doing. So uh, whatever the date, it might not be comfortable. It's you know, certainly not uh, the ideal conditions for a town meeting, but I think that this is what the uh, world we're living in right now and every community is doing it. So whatever the selectmen decide, we'll work night and day to get it to make it happen. So really, Jack, it comes down to your opinion versus my opinion, not really whether or not we're going to, and Jack, John's obviously, um, whether or not we're going to be or can be ready. That's, and I know, I know you don't agree with me. I knew that walking into the meeting. Heard it. I heard it from everyone else. I heard from dozens of people that you don't agree with me. Um, but I just think my 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 uh, opinion is backed by the comments of a lot of townspeople and also by um, the school district. And I think that's a pretty. And I think that we have heard that we can do it if we can do it. We can do it safely. So I'm really having a problem with uh, wait. You know, waiting. 
I'm gonna, other I'm gonna, items on the agenda. Wait a minute. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm talking, there are other items on the agenda than the school uh, budget, right? I mean, it's an annual town meeting. That's right. That's our whole year's budget. It's, with the school budget is important. It's on there. They're half our budget, actually slightly more. There's other things on there. We have the town budget, for example. Right. Most people in the town, like the highway department, the police department, the fire department, they're all very interested in the budget. We haven't heard from them at all. But this, what, this they haven't been organized to send letters uh, to us with the, all the letters are scripted. You, you, you know, <laughs> Jack, come on, you can't really say that input from people is scripted because it disagrees with what you say. And I, well, listen, you know what, we disagree, Catherine, we disagree, okay. But I do agree with you that the town budget is very important, and I also believe, based on what I've heard, that a 112th budget, and I don't know if there's anyone here who wants or can't speak to that, especially going into a, getting a 112th budget from, um, I guess, the DOR, and then uh, using it for a week, and then switching to a town meeting budget for the town is logistically not ideal either. So be a town or school doesn't matter to me. I, my, my uh, uh, I guess I can call it my rationale is the same. Frankly, I've reviewed this a uh, number of times with our finance department and they have both scenarios covered thoroughly. So to gyrate either plan A or plan B, town meeting or versus uh, one twelfth, uh, they do it. The numbers are the numbers and they have the, the means and they've already accomplished the task of putting together a one twelfth budget. So it happens, it happens. I, I don't understand where there's a problem with that. We, well, so it's, we, whether it's a week or it's two weeks, the, taking the pressure off of everybody by another few weeks, I think is very important because the logistics as uh, Anthony said, well, we'll make it work. I have every confidence that we will, we will have that assurance happen. But at the same time, there are so many unpredictables uh, in this whole situation. Uh, I'm concerned about the whole the whole thing. But I know we have to have a town meeting. So, so no one's asked anyone from finance. Again, we're, you know, throwing out these opinions. But you know what? I'm getting quite accustomed to being uh, the one versus two. I'm quite accustomed to having these conversations that. We seem to want input about, or we ask for input, and yet we have 80 people wanting to give input and we're not allowing it. So uh, uh, Catherine, I, I never asked for their input. Wait, I, I'm, uh, I'm ready to vote. Uh, you don't have to say anymore. Ready to vote. Uh, I want to say one more thing. Go ahead. Uh, I watched the last regional school district committee meeting. It took three and a half hours. I watched it twice. Okay. And one of the reasons I, uh, I, I didn't want any input tonight, other than this, is one of the <clears throat> school committee members. I can't pronounce his last name correctly, so I'm not going. He's a gentleman. He said to his fellow uh, Hamilton Wenham Regional School District Committee members, let's crash the next Wenham uh, Board of Selectmen meeting. And, and the implication is they want to be disruptive. This on tape, you can go back and look at it like I did. I looked at it twice to make sure I was saying it correctly. I, I, that was very disturbing for me to hear. They want to crash it. I think that I believe you and I'm sure that that person said that, or I don't know. I did not hear that. Um, the fact okay. is, Jack, I, I will say as the outgoing selectman, this may be my last comment, um, I've spent six years and campaigned on opening town meeting and being willing to hear people. And if it takes three hours because people have things to say, I listened to that meeting too. And I, frankly, there was a lot of repetition and I, I didn't love that. Um, but we did a survey, we've, we've asked people, we've gotten input. We have not gotten input from our own finance department as to what, or I have not heard. Of course they have to put together a 112th. And of course we have to have a town meeting, but I have not heard if there are um, advantages to having a town meeting from a finance department point of view before July 1st. So again, uh, but uh, I... Well. I'm kind of done with this. So, Jack, if I may, can I? Can I? Oh, what, Anthony? I just want to bring to um, Dr. Kuchenberg has asked as she was, she wanted to explain some of the issues that they would have with regard to a one twelfth budget. I don't know if you'd find that helpful. I, I actually, uh, Michelle Bailey sent uh, an email to me. I understand 
the, the 112 budget is based upon, uh, Michelle Bailey outlined it succinctly uh, in an email to me today. The 112 budget is based upon fiscal 2020. Obviously they're asking for more money in fiscal 2021. So uh, I think a, a 10 day or 11 day delay uh, uh, switching over to a, a full um, 2021 budget is gonna be not, not a problem. If they went on to September or October, which I think was her, she didn't express that uh, month particularly, if it goes on for several months, they're gonna have a problem with money because they're gonna be uh, working on, uh, presuming that the, the town eventually approves the school budget. Uh, it will, they're going to have more of a problem. She mentioned that we have, uh, they don't have any funds to uh, come up with like we do. I'm not sure what fund she's talking about. I think they have an E&D fund, so it's a significant amount of money. In any event, uh, she was comfortable with us uh, uh, having a meeting as long as it occurred before July 15th. It's in writing. I'm not making it up. You can go ask her. And she's uh, the number two person of the regional school district committee. So I'm taking, uh, I presume that she uh, communicated with the colleagues before she sent that out. Uh, I'd be surprised if she just made it up on her own. So that, uh, uh, so I'm presuming that uh, she represents the majority of the regional school district board. Otherwise, I can't believe she wouldn't have said it to me. So anyway, she, if she was comfortable with as long as we had the meeting before mid-July and July 11th is before mid-July, then I think we should be okay. <coughs> So I'm gonna call for a vote. All in favor of uh, the Slackman that is, all in favor of the Slackman having an um, annual town meeting on Saturday, July 11th. Yes or no? John? Yes. Captain? No. Jack Wilhelm, yes, it passes two to one. All righty. That was a tough one. I expect it to be tough anyway. What else we got? Anthony, what's next? I'm gonna... well, next, Jack, is uh, with two things. We're going uh, to wrap with the budget. We have the 112 budget. Uh, there was a, a question on, uh, you asked Chris to refine his email with some bullets, uh, points. Chris is on and he can explain uh, those and uh, we're looking for that to be approved so we can submit that to the uh, Department of Revenue for approval. So we'd like, we would appreciate a vote on that tonight. And Chris is on and then we are going to talk about Again, going over the FY21 amended budget, uh, Jackie will give the uh, presentation or, or uh, discussion, lead the discussion on that. So we'll start with Chris with the 112 budget. Chris? Yep. Um, so, yeah, going back over um, the more summary that you asked for at the last one. Um, so, the 112 budget is for the majority of expenses based off of the FY20 budget um uh, one twelfth of that um there are a few exceptions um to that which is you know re uh, ethic retirement assessment um we paid in full we have a debt payment that is due on august 1st um but that is a saturday so that's included in the july um one twelfth so that will be paid on time um our general insurance um is being paid in full in july which we like we always have done in the past because we receive a discount for paying in full, um, which is the same um, with the Essex Regional that we pay up front because we receive approximately about a 15,000 discount if we pay that full in July. Um, we also, um, the library is part of the Merrimack Valley La Library Consortium. Um, that membership um, needs to, is always paid in full in July and that is about 50, 51,000 or so. Um, then we have um, our permitting software through a seller that um, we needs to be paid in full in July. And then the school assessment, which um, before um, I had misunderstood and I had it based off the FY21 um, approved budget that is based off of the FY20 school budget. Um, so I just wanted to make, um, make that correction, make that correction aware that um, I had misspoken at the last um, finance committee meeting on Wednesday and at when I presented this at the um, last board of selectmen meeting. Um, so, and then as relating to the salaries, we have two payrolls um, in the months of July. So all of the salaries were calculated on the two payrolls that are gonna be paid out in July. As well as any stipends, right, Chris? 
Yes, stipend stipends would be on one of those. It will be two. The stipends will be on one of the payrolls, and regular employees will have their um, their two payrolls. I have a question, Chris. Yes, John. Um, so the school the school uh, uh, bill will be paid paid in full. Is that correct? Yes. I don't understand where the well, not in full. Current. It will be it will be one twelfth. Well, one of their one twelfth of the FY twenty yep. school budget, and then with the the fact with a little yes. go ahead no, please, with go a ahead. change there was a slight change in the percentage that the um our enrollment shift does take into effect in as um so we actually increased a little bit in our percentage so the one twelve does factor in that um, enrollment shift um, but it is still based off the FY twenty. Um, okay. Budgeted a month. All right. All right. Yeah. And then just a, a general comment uh, with the schools being shuttered for months now and no utilities being used or very little, no cleaning, no lunches, no buses. I, I'm confused why they wouldn't be very uh, flush in monies. Uh, so uh, I'm sure I'll hear a lot of flack about that, but uh, um, somebody's somebody's got to think about those those costs. Anyways, I'm done. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, John. Nothing. Questions? Catherine, questions? No. I don't have any either. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. You need a new vote on that, Anthony? Yes, please. All right. Will we accept the revised fiscal 2021 uh, town? So-called 112 budget. Second. Comments? All in favor? Aye. John? Aye. Catherine? Yes. Yes. Thank you. And the last um, the last thing for the night is the FY21 budget. And Jackie, there she is. So to, to, to just give a an introduction uh, we we recognized um that we needed to relook at this and, and fincom was you know very helpful and in, and in, in really needing to uh pointing out that we needed to look at our revenues and we did so um in doing that jackie will go over we actually have reduced our revenues our state aid by 25 percent the recommended number was 20 percent uh by brad and bruce um, we went a little bit more conservative because at one other time during a, another past recession, the state aid cut was at 28%. So not that it's a, a tremendous number for Wenham anyways. Um, we wanted to err on the side of being a little bit more conservative. Also, we reduced our uh, local receipts. Uh, the larger chunk of that is being from um, motor vehicle excise tax. and. Uh, so you'll see that and Jack will explain that we reduced our revenues by 300,000. You know, before this, we had a need for an override. And that override was $361,000 and change. Um, COVID-19 was not going to change the fact that Wenham needs an override. So, but I'm really happy to say that we worked really hard revising our revenue estimates, putting off projects that now we're not going to be able to really... Um, uh, do because we're going to be really dealing with COVID-19 at least through the calendar year um, and maybe beyond. So a lot of those projects that we were doing regionally, like a regional IT, I, I think that we all have our hands full in dealing with the pandemic. So we pushed that off. And bottom line is we've, we've, we've lowered the uh, revenue estimates, we reduced expenses, and we still are able to, we're going to have an override, but or at least we're recommending at this point. And but the override, we were able to knock off and only have about, and Jack can give you the exact number, $250,000. So um, yes, there's a budget, uh, there's a ballot question that's going to save the $361,000, but it's important to know that that is a valid uh, question. And that question, what that does is the residents would be raising the levy limit. And it's town meeting that says what you spend so just because that ballot question is 361, town meeting, we're gonna to ask to appropriate the $250,000. Uh, 
So uh, the rest that that delta is now called uh, levy capacity, excess levy capacity, which right now we have zero of. So um, it's only a town meeting. We're only going to be asking for our town meeting to appropriate the 250. But the top, that ballot question is important uh, going forward that that's what allows the town meeting to appropriate that 250 if they so choose. I'll turn it over to Jackie. Before Jackie comments, uh, is there a FinCon meeting tomorrow night? There is. Uh, did you present this budget uh, last Wednesday or are you presenting it tomorrow? We have presented the budget. They had a discussion and um, uh, I believe that they are prepared to vote on it tomorrow. Uh, Gary, just nod your head if I'm right on that. Yeah, they're prepared to meet on the budget, uh, vote on uh, the FY amended budget tomorrow. And we would revise the warrant article that will probably take uh, take their uh, their votes on that. And then uh, we'll start presenting the warrant articles to uh, the selectmen. And one thing, getting back to time meeting, and uh, when we have the discussion again, most communities are only taking up the financial articles. So instead of having this long town meeting outside in July in, in July 11th, that it would be my recommendation that we shrink that to just deal with the financial articles and all of the other articles get pushed off to a full town meeting um, in dealing with those. So we can do the financial business and then move along. Let's divide that into two questions for a vote. And that, uh, uh, let me go back to the fiscal 2000. I'd be more comfortable waiting until our next meeting to vote on this fiscal 2021 town budget till after I've heard and watched uh, the selectmen tomorrow night, although the school committee is also meeting tomorrow night as well, uh, which is important for the schools and in terms of cuts. At least, and uh, I'd rather hear the, uh, before, as, as a selectman, before I vote on this, to hear what the FinCom has to say. I think we can wait a week for that or two, whatever. Uh, secondly, in terms of uh, bifurcating the uh, foreign articles, uh, we have the authority to do that. So I'd like to comment uh, of John and then Catherine to, see, uh, to uh, what their druthers are and what their opinion is on dividing it, bifurcating between a, a town meeting in the fall and a town meeting. Uh, we could pull up a list if that'll be helpful, Jack, so you can see. I, what I just you... want, I think they understand what it is. We okay. have the zoning, the zoning can go on for an hour and a half. I mean, that, uh, but the revised zoning bylaws and the stuff like that. And so uh, um, just without, I, I just want to hear what, uh, they're either in favor of it or not, or they're not sure. So one of the three. John? Uh, I'm very much in favor of splitting it up. Uh, there's no need to uh, belabor the theoretical July meeting because uh, I think that's still up for grabs given what can happen these days. Um, but uh, to, to be belabor it with all these other issues that aren't financial, we need to get the financials taken care of as quickly as possible. Uh, so I'm in favor of it. Catherine? I defer to the two of you. Uh, I'm fine with that. So the guidance is uh, from uh, two of the selectmen that chose to speak is that uh, it's it's a go. Okay. We'll have that ready for next meeting to talk about. And so uh, again, uh, let's let's uh, prepare to vote uh, uh, next time we on the revised uh, 2021 annual town budget after we uh, hear from the uh, income. Uh, may I have, a qu I have a question, please, for Anthony, um, or maybe, well, for Anthony, I think. I, I was at the FinCom meeting last week. I thought that maybe they just uh, approved the budget in, maybe they didn't actually vote, but didn't last week they approve this budget? I think they all spoke, uh, and Carrie, you can nod your head and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they all spoke in favor of what we presented and but they didn't actually take the formal vote. Okay. We plan to do it on Wednesday night. Carrie, okay. Carrie's giving me uh, the yes. So. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just take a moment, if I could. No. Just <laughs> yes, John. What? Oh, I was going to say I wasn't going to say anything. Um, I know numerous times over the past few months I've uh, commended highly. 
our fire department, ambulance and police, first responders and so forth. Uh, but I'd like to make a very strong commendation to the, the people in our town hall, the unsung heroes that are gyrating numbers after numbers after numbers and trying to work under very adverse conditions with very thin departments. Uh, nobody's nobody's hat and, fat and happy over here by any means uh, with too many personnel and people like Jackie who just goes above and beyond all the time putting on another hat and another hat and another hat and Anthony God only knows you you catch all the balls flying out there so I, I really want to thank the finance department uh, in particular uh, for all the number crunching they've been doing and I know the pressure that we've put on them uh, to perform so thank you all thank you i'm sure staff appreciate hearing that absolutely we're lucky we're very fortunate um so i think that's it Anthony, right? Go to the agenda unless you want do you want jackie to hold off until next week to talk about it or do you want to give a little overview quick now or no i mean the budget itself no the budget. I think uh, I'd like some more time to review it myself, and I want to hear the questions that the FinCom asks if they have any additional okay. questions. Yeah, that's fine. Vote is. So if they only vote uh, three or two or uh, something like that, or two to three, um, uh, I'm going to be a little nervous, and I want to hear what their uh, their criticism might be. I think I'd like their advice before we go forward. So with that said, I think it's time to wrap it up, and I move for an adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Okay, it's uh, six, uh, seven, fifty-four, I think. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good night.